Hello everyone, it's Christine here and I'm joining you from the town of Burrawang which is in the southern highlands of New South Wales um, and as those of you who watch my channel regularly would know I've come up here um, with Alex and Travis for a workshop with Fleur Woods, a five day retreat uh, focusing on nature's text textures and representing those in fiber art and today was day one of the workshop and I think um, even though we've had dinner we've um, yeah sat down for the evening I think I'm still on a high from just the whole experience of um, creating and being in the presence of a whole bunch of lovely creative ladies and being under um, the guidance and tuition and gentle um, teaching style of the lovely Fleur Woods who does incredible textile art um, and is just the most wonderful um, teacher. So what you see in front of you is what I've created on day one so far and this will be the base that we'll be building on over the coming days. So let me give you a little bit of a peek of what we got. So we each got a, a box. It's um, I think Fleur said they come from they might be like a Kmart box or something for scrapbooking, but she finds they're particularly useful because later in the week we're going to be adding um, paint to our pieces and it might take them a bit of time to dry, particularly if they're quite sort of thick and textural, which they naturally um, will tend to be. So um, when we got to class, we had a beautiful um, box um, on our tables. I'll try and insert some photos. I took some photos, so I'll try and add some of those into the video, possibly at the end as well, so you can see them. Um, and we had a box of a box of goodies. I've got other goodies because we were encouraged to also um, add in other supplies. But we got a box frame, um, which is really handy because I don't have one of these at the moment. Um, we got this monk's cloth, which we were working into. Um, we also got a punch needle, and that's what we were really focusing on for the first part of today. And I've always heard of punch needling. I hadn't tried it before, and I really wanted to try it under um, Fleur's expert tuition. She also gave us a bespoke um, threader, even though this comes with a threader. She makes her own one, which is even easier to use. Um, we've also got a little hoop name badge so it was nice everyone had name badges so we could recognize each other um, and then we had a piece of cloth as well um, some beautiful Bohan um, France needles um, a little pair of, of scissors and then yeah there's a whole supply table where we can pick up other um, bits of textiles to add into our pieces as we we go along so um, I won't go through the process because the process is is Fleur's, but this is um, days day one's creation. So this is the front of the piece, because I know many of you like to see the backs of the pieces as well. This is this is the backs, and it was just fascinating um, having Fleur guide us through the approach that she takes to even how she creates her shapes. Um, we have total freedom of whether we want to do a whole large piece or whether we want to do a number of um, smaller pieces that could then be cut out or they could stay as their um, sort of I guess their constituent parts um, but we're being encouraged to think about nature's textures um, and so Fleur creates amazing rock pools in this particular style um, I'm wanting to probably do a rock pool one and some sort of mossy foresty ones maybe some more lichen-y ones so that's why I've created at this stage um, a number of them who knows over the course of the workshop they might merge and meld with each other but this is where they are at so far and these are going to be the incredible um, bases that we're going to continue working into and adding other elements to so we'll be playing with um, clay air dry clay um, some people some folks um, got stuck into that today I'll be um, probably doing that tomorrow morning to start creating some shapes um, but we're also as well as doing um, the punch needle um, we we're able to play with the supplies from the table and start creating some other pieces I created um, using some little pipe cleaners and then a wrapping and a weaving technique with thread um, up the top this little fungi because yeah I really want to have some little fungi embedded in my finished finished piece 
Um, I'll probably try and make some out of clay as well, but um, yeah, I really, I, I'm pretty happy with these actually. Uh, I think it's created a nice little effect. Apologies for the shadows, it's not my usual um, filming set setup, um, but I'm just so, so wired to share it with you and I'm probably rocking the table in my excitement. So that is um, day one, that's the, the pot of um, goodies from which, and then there's a big table from which to draw, but it's just so um, yeah, inspiring having different types of fibers um, to play with. Um, I'm thinking this will, be, this will be pretty cool, sort of maybe added in parts of it, sort of like a, yeah, it really is starting to look like a little rock pool. Um, I'm actually amazed, and I think even Fleur was amazed how much we, we actually got done in, in day one. And then when I got home, I was actually pulling out some of my little covered buttons, and I thought some of these, I won't necessarily use them, but I thought some of these could end up nesting beautifully um, into, the, into the pieces. Um, so I might pop them in my, my box to have as options to use. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I am so enthused, I'm so energized um, to get to learn new techniques and just to learn the thinking process. Um, I, I was probably thinking a bit before it, thinking, oh, do I need to know exactly what we're going, what I'm going to be wanting to create? But Fleur takes you through a really intuitive um, style where you first of all, just focus on building, building a base. Um, but she talks about how you can, can structure it and that's why we um, did, our, did our drawings on the back. But again, um, I'm not going to not going to steal um, the Fleur's thunder by um, talking through her method. But I'm happy to happy to show you um, my evolving evolving pieces, and I just can't wait to get stuck back into that tomorrow. But I thought I'd do some stitching with you now as well, um, because I'm working on a few little pouches as presents. <coughs> Excuse me, just a little cough always find after I eat dinner and have a cold drink, I get this um, little asthma cough. So this is one of the little pouches um, that I need to keep stitching. And again, apologies if the table is rocking at all. So what I've done here um, is just done a fabric collage onto a patchwork, um, a vintage patchwork. I think this came from a cushion possibly. Um, and so I decided just to have the stitching from the front sh show through to the back of the patchwork piece because I think the stitching just adds some lovely additional detail to this patterned background. And with all of the collage pieces, I folded them over and folded their edges under so they don't have raw edges around here. Apart from the odd one, this one had a raw edge just because I didn't have enough to fold under. Um, but otherwise the edges aren't raw and I've done stitching all around to anchor them down plus around the outside and they'll get some further stitching when I um, stitch the, um, the pouch together. So yeah, that's the, that's the pre-existing, um, not collage, um, pre-existing patchwork back. Um, and then this is the, the front. So I use some of my fabric samples from the reverse art truck. That's that, that, that. I think that's from an old pillowcase. That one's a vintage um, furnishing fabric. That one's a vintage fabric. Just love it with the, the bird. Um, yeah, so most of them I think are yeah, vintage, vintage fabrics or reverse art truck fabrics. And I've just had a lovely time. This is what I worked on when I was um, traveling up here from Melbourne um, up to New South Wales. In the car. Um, Alex drove most of the way but I was feeling well enough that I was able to yeah drive for a, I think I drove for about an hour and a half um, of the trip but otherwise I was stitching away on this and you wouldn't think uh, but yeah it actually took, I, I've actually had to finish um, the rest of it up, up here, it took absolutely ages because I did really intricate little seed stitching here. So what I'm going to need to do is to um, work out where I want it to fold. And so I'm thinking I will have it fold something, something like that. I still want the little beaded sections there. And then I've made myself a little, sorry, I'll put it up on camera, made a little um, bead on an end of a string that can then wrap around. Um, this is one of my covered buttons, which I've made um, covered buttons in a previous video. And I thought this um, fabric went really, Went really well with it and the good thing about using a little closure a wrap closure like this is even if the pouch gets quite full 
Um, it's not like a little loop closure where you need to know exactly where you want the loop to sit. This one can be, can be adjustable based on how full the pouch actually is. I think one of my hairs got caught there. So I think I'll probably, yeah, do it something, something like that. I think, yeah, this, this can even sort of pull under when the pouch isn't particularly full and that will work, that will work quite well. So my hair is caught in there. So what I need to do is do some stitching down the sides and I'll tell you a bit about what else we got up to on our first day here. I'll tell you a bit about the place we're staying and I think I've got some footage um, that I took yesterday out in the garden and looking at the cottage as well. So I'll add that in at the end as well as some footage that I took at the beach. So stay tuned at the end if you want to see a bit of um, scenery as well as some photos from today's workshop. So I'm just going to have a rustle around in my bag of threads and work out what I want to use to sew up the, the sides. I might even use this this variegated anchor thread. And so yeah, on the um, the pouch itself, I've just done lots of different stitching. So I'd mentioned the seed stitching. I've done stitching just outlining around with just a regular cotton. Um, I've added little beads for the little ends of the stamens. I've done canther stitching following lines. Done some little French knots. Um, I've done yeah more French knots in a lovely glisteny thread over here. Um, yeah, just done outlining around some of the squares, done crosses all the way down here, done little dashes coming down there again, just outlined and then followed parts of the design. So I just like to do a variety of things and then count the stitching that way and that way using some of my hand dyed variegated thread. And then I put um, my French laundry labels in here. So let's Let's finish it off putting it together and I might use German knotted stitch I think because I quite like that one. So that's tying a knot. Can you hear the cicadas outside? It's just coming into coming into dusk. So I just borrowed a clip from over here. I had a clip on one of the other so I'm working on a few little pouches. See if I can get them get them finished while I'm up here. I actually thought I'd get them sort of all stitched in the car, but um, yeah, it takes takes longer. It takes longer than you think. I suppose that's why we call it slow stitch. In fact, at lunch today we were yeah we were chatting about slow stitch and people have different different ideas of what it is. For me, it's yeah about the mindfulness of the experience of it. So, just thinking if I'm going to do my German knotted stitch. So I'll start off with a blanket stitch, two blanket stitches relatively close together. I'll try and bring it up so you can see a bit better. I've got the, as I say, the camera's on a bit of a different angle than it normally would be. And I've just done threaded, but that's okay. I might just try and actually move the camera. Just close your eyes if you get a bit. No, nope, that's going to give a shadow. So no, we won't move the camera. We will just try and make do with the camera where it is. Just get my thread. I've probably made my thread too long, but that's okay. So with German knotted stitch, once we've done those two stitches close together, we take it up and it's easiest to do with the back of your needle back through the stitches and then that will bring them together to make them into a little V shape. And then you go sort of a bit further along, again doing like a blanket stitch, so hooking the thread underneath. And then another one close to that one line my bits of fabric up again with each other. Another one close and hooking the thread underneath. And then we're going to take our needle back back through that way. 
and then we'll continue down. So again, hooking the thread under the needle. So thank you for everyone's lovely wishes after my um, little kidney stone misadventure. Um, it's amazing how many people have had um, experiences with kidney stones, either themselves or their family members. And yeah, I just have, feel absolute compassion for anyone that's had to had to deal with kidney stones. It is it is not a pleasant experience. And unfortunately, my um, my digestive system did not enjoy the the one um, morphine painkiller that I ended up having to take, um, because then I got a little bout of um, diverticulitis from <laughs> from that. Um, and so when we got up here, I've just had a day, twenty four hours of just sticking to a liquid, so some chicken stock and just some clear clear liquids to settle that down. But thankfully, thankfully, I was in full fighting health for. Um, for a day of creativity today and was even able to even able to eat the the lovely catered lunch made by the beautiful Zoe at um, Green Door Studios where we're doing the retreat so spoiled to have lunch provided and little snacks as well and there's a beautiful resident dog there um, Chester and so Travis and Alex came to pick me up today and so Travis had a lovely time having a play with um, with Chester Chester had a, um, a squeaky soft toy, um, sort of pizza, pizza shaped soft toy. And so yeah, he was squeaking with that when Travis came up. In fact, it was actually amazing. Um, Chester had been sitting outside the door of the studio. He'd come in at various points, including to fully sniff my bag of supplies because he could, I think he could smell Travis on it. Um, but at one point, um, yeah, in the late, in sort of the late afternoon, I was um, expecting Alex would be arriving and Chester went bolting off from near the front door and I heard him barking and I thought oh maybe maybe they're out of the car so he's having a bark at bark at Travis anyway Alex had only just driven onto the the property which is quite a ways from where the the studio is and Chester had somehow detected that there was a a dog on board um, but then they yeah they had a lovely lovely play as mates so I think that Travis will enjoy picking picking me up doesn't seem to have hold, held too much of a grudge. I think he had a good day with Alex, who took him down to Mittagong today. Down or up, I'm not quite sure of the geography around here. Um, and they went to a beautiful lake. So yeah, Alex is having a good time. I was a bit worried he might be a bit sort of lost, not, not lost without me, but um, we usually do things together on holidays, but he's happy that I am happy and happy I am. I haven't felt this sort of, yeah, energised from a... Well, I haven't actually done many. I, I haven't done a stitchery um, or a text, um, textile art retreat before, so... Um, or even a workshop. I've really only just been self-taught and um, joined, in, joined in online activities. But this is, this is an absolute treat. And so I was sat at the table with the up the end with the the Roxy clan, so Rachel and Sarah and Juju, Judy, um, as well as Wanette, um, who's come all the way from the US. So just amazing, just just so lovely. Um, felt like yeah, amongst old friends um, because I've yeah obviously watched all of their all of, apart from Judy. Judy doesn't make videos, but we get to see. Judy's work in Sarah and, Rock, um, Sarah and Rachel's videos and Rachel had made the huge trek out from um, Italy had only been out here I think since Friday so amazing that they also taught a workshop um, yesterday she's she was doing well I think I would have been probably asleep under the table if that was me so yeah this is one of my favorite little stitches for edges um, it, just makes a really lovely effect so German knotted stitch I'll try and remember to link the video where we did that in the dictionary of of stitches just 
take that back through. Oops, sorry, just bump the camera. Trying not to press on the table because the camera's um, anchored onto the onto the table, so I don't want to be shaking you all the time. Might have to find a different different setup if I'm doing more more stitchery, although I might just do show and tells. I'm not sure. We'll see what the week holds. But I thought you might like to see at least how my piece is evolving because I know many of you were, were curious about what it was going to what the workshop was going to involve. Yeah, I'd, all I'd say is if you ever get the chance to um, be at a workshop with, with Fleur Woods, um, she is incredible and such a good, good human being. But just such a lovely presence and such a great, great teacher and just allows a lot of freedom as well, which works really well for me. That's kind of what I like. I like someone to to share and guide, but not to, yeah, I don't want my entire path to be set out for me. I want options to kind of explore and play, and that's something that Fleur really encourages and encourages you to kind of start from where you're at, and um, she'll help help you sort of get where you want to go. Because I definitely didn't come into the workshop with a clear vision of what I kind of wanted out of it. I just wanted to really give myself five days to explore and play and extend myself, learn new things. That's why learning things like punch needle, um, which I've never done before, but is going to be such a useful technique, I think, to, yeah, to just be able to add, add amazing fibre to my, my pieces. Can you hear all the birds? It's that dust time when they're all, all making their noise all talking to each other. So yeah, we drove up from um, Melbourne on Saturday. Um, so that was a long, long drive, um, probably close to nine hours by the time we had stops along the way. Um, Travis is an amazing traveler in the car, Travis the Black Labrador. Um, he just did, yeah, does so well, just sleeps and periodically wants to look out the window. So we put the windows down. Um, but yeah, the roads, it's a good, decent, decent road to drive on, only a few, few bumpy bits. Um, yeah, and got here in, in good time to the cottage, settled in. We were pretty tired um, that night, I think, because also, yeah, my body was still sort of, yeah, recovering from the, the kidney stone episode. And then I also, as I mentioned, had that sort of additional bit of fun of um, my digestive system not really loving the the, the anti-inflammatories and morphine um, so or opioids um, so yeah we just went out to the local the local pub I guess it is um, which has beautiful views over the the lower lands sort of going down from the, the southern highlands and yeah, just had dinner there on reflection I probably should have been here yeah, um, doing a liquid diet by then but yeah started started that and did that all the, over the course of of Sunday um, and then yeah on Sunday we went to um, I've just found the name of the place it will come back to in a moment um, Shore Haven I think no Shore Haven no Shell Harbour, I think. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to, I'll, I'll put it in the description below. Now I've just totally um, blanked out. Um, basically, if you go down from the, the Southern Highlands, sort of towards the, the coast there, and it was just, yeah, beautiful, beautiful beaches. We got a little bit lost because um, the map system in Alex's car hadn't updated to a new housing estate that had been built and had blocked off some of the, the roads that it thought were, were there. Um, and so yeah, Travis was able to have a have a swim when we first got down onto the beach. There was um, a lifesaver section, and so yeah, dogs can't go in that section. But we just had to walk past it, and then yeah, Travis had his own stretch of of beach to himself. We could have um, we didn't think it'd be sort of warm enough for us to be able to have a swim, so we didn't take our bathers down. But it was yeah, it was beautiful and warm down there. It's actually, I should be probably. Let me just hide the end I generally try and, try and hide the end in the in the little side seam 
and I'm really pleased with how this one has turned out and I've got a few more where I've laid out all the fabrics I just need to need to do the decorative stitching on them maybe I'll start down here so when I hide the thread in the seam I just sort of pop through and then pop out at the edge and then that puts the knot um, and I can just take the little taily bit off and the knot will get hidden inside the, the seam. So I'll just make sure it looks mostly straight. I think that's pretty good. And then I'll just take my take my thread just back at, back to the start. So I'm just passing it inside the inside the seam and then I can begin the process of doing my German knotted stitch, which is just a variation on blanket stitch. So two stitches close together. So yeah, we did that on that morning and then we went out for a bit of explore around here. Um, oh, we went to Barrel because we needed to just do a, a shop of provisions for while we're here. I needed to get some, yeah, some chicken so I could make some chicken broth. Got some meat for the boys, the boys being Travis and, and Alex. Um, a few other bits and pieces, because we didn't want to bring a lot of sort of food up from, from Melbourne with us, particularly perishables or anything, because it was such a long, long trip. And yeah, explored around the, the local area, but yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful, lush, um, oh yeah, and we also went to um, Fitzroy Falls, which is an amazing waterfall. You sort of yeah park in a little car park, and then yeah you walk a not a huge distance in, and you've got just this um, rock face that just sort of yeah drops drops away. I didn't even want to go right near the edge because it's such a huge drop down and these beautiful beautiful waterfalls. So I'll try and also add a few of. I don't think I took any video there. I've just got a few photos. We had to take it in turns to go in because it's national park so travis um, can't go in in there so one of us stayed with travis while the other other went in and tomorrow with our little group we're going to be walking into a um, waterfall as well that's nearby the studio or nearby robertson i think so alex will drop me off there and i think zoe said she'll give me a lift in Back to the back to the studio. I think a few of the ladies aren't wanting to go. Um, I had one saying they they don't like leeches. Whether they'll be leeches or not, I, I don't think it's like a full on um, yeah leechy leechy area. I think they said it's not a not a tricky walk in at all. I'll just make sure I wear my shoes that have a bit of bit of grip on them. doing this hopefully you're stitching away on something and not finding it too tedious watching watching the German knotted stitch so I've just caught a thread there what have I caught sometimes you just get the little threads out of the, the fabric that just catch on it just trim that little thread off there we go Yeah, it's a real, real treat, um, not only to have a, a week to spend creating and to have that, yeah, that gentle, gentle tuition from, from Fleur, but just to be amongst people that are equally as passionate about creativity as you. It's, um, I think that's something that we all kind of get from this, um, yeah, the connections we have on YouTube or through the, uh, the little Facebook groups that we might be might be part of but to actually be in a room um, with people um, who have that is just yeah it's a real it's a real gift and it's a really energizing um, and nurturing thing I think probably the the most people I've kind of yeah been been in a room with for, for quite a while since pre-covid probably I've been into work obviously for some some work workshops and things and we had our exec retreat the other the other week but um, yeah, that's a, that's a smaller group than what we had today 
not even sure exactly how many were there today. It was just a large, long, long table. But it felt like just the right amount of people. There was a nice buzz in the room as people chatted amongst themselves as they worked and hearing Fleur sort of working individually with folks as well as coming around and showing us um, techniques and giving us options of things we might want to want to try and do. I think I've started small down there and got bigger, but that is fine, I think. It's a okay. So I'll just finish up here and then you'll be able to see the, the finished pouch. And then I better go and spend some quality couch time with Travis, I think. He'll want some mama mama cuddles time after that, I think. Almost got the tail caught into it. Ugh. Definitely need my nice um, thick, thick needle. My javelin, as Linda calls it, or sword. Can't remember now. <laughs> particularly thick here where I've got quite a few bits of fabric. This is where I've folded the fabric over. One more stitch and then I'll just do a few stitches at the corner to where I'm just having to push against the table so apologies for any shaking. Oops, whatever the name. sure what I've actually done there. I think I've almost done a, a German knotted stitch without quite in wanting to do it that way. I'll just fix it up like that. There we go. And then I'll just put a few last stitches. It's very hard pushing through here. But luckily the yeah the quilted um, vintage quilted piece was actually really easy to to stitch into it's just where I've got multiple layers of fabric and stitching it's just that little bit harder here let's do a couple of more stitches there we go into the into the fabric so there we go happy with that sorry I'll put it put it up where you can see it so that's inside inside the pouch that's the little beaded that's my little um, covered button which I put a covered back on as well and I just attached that I put um, an thread through the back of the um, button first and then stitched it through a couple of times onto the, the fabric and then this will just wrap around as many times as you want for security and there's the little the little pouch so I think that is super cute as well so I hope you enjoyed that and I'll pop some um, yeah some videos and some photos at the end of what I've been up to so far and I'll be sure to check back in um, tomorrow if I can with progress on my beautiful um, textural nature's textures pieces. Thanks everyone and stay tuned for the photos and video. Bye.
the little cottage that we're staying at. Beautiful green and lush. It was interesting we drove through quite um, dry country to get here. Sweet little gate. Make sure I close the gate so I've got Travis the, the pupwoods. It's a beautiful afternoon. I think it's about 5.30 but the sun's sun shining. You can see the sweet little cottage. Beautiful garden beds, hydrangeas, lime or lemon tree, I think it's probably a lime. You can hear the cockatoos and they're in a beautiful backyard. So Travis has been having a lovely time jaunting around. Lovely tree. I think this might be an apple tree. I'm not sure, actually. Well, someone's just decided to start up their lawnmower, as you do, on a Sunday afternoon. But yeah, very sweet little little cottage. Very comfortable inside. So we're just staying in Burrowang, just down the road from Green Door Studios, where we're where I'll be going along for the first day of Fleur Woods workshop tomorrow. So I'm filming this on Sunday, Sunday afternoon. We've been out and about visiting the, the beaches today and waterfalls. So I'll include some video or photos from that as well. Probably after this, I think. So it's got a great um, covered, well not covered deck, um, fenced deck which is fabulous for Travis because he can sit out there with us. But he's got the garden to run around with but just because it's some, summer we, pr we prefer not to leave him running loose in the garden um, just to check that there's no, no animals that would cause him any degree of harm. So yeah, very, very lush, very green. When I was first looking at the weather forecast um, for our trip away, it looked like it was going to be stormy today, but it's just been the most lovely, lovely day. Look at the colours on that tree, aren't they delightful? Beautiful tall trees. Very established garden, which is lovely. You get the sun, the effect of the sun coming in the afternoon. Beautiful, beautiful sun. More of those lovely coloured leaves. The city's coming into, into the autumn leaves falling down. This car parked out the, the back there. And yeah, lots of beautiful, beautiful bird call. I think you can see a parrot up in the top up there. And cockatoos and all manner. I think you can hear the cockatoos screaming, <laughs> screeching as they go over. We call them hooli hooligans. <laughs> but it is nice having the bird bird life. So yeah, some more beautiful flowers. I think I saw, um, I think these are echinacea, aren't they? With their little um, tipped down flower heads. And then daisies. And then some more. Have some beautiful purple flower as well. So yeah, just nice to have the the flowers. And then some very squat um, hydrangeas. They're very low to the ground. I didn't even know hydrangeas kind of grew in that bushing formation. And that almost looks like a lettuce, but isn't a lettuce. But yeah, just lovely. The sunshine, but not too hot. It was a really cool morning this morning. And yesterday when we drove in, it was all misty, misty and mysterious. So lots of lovely places to sit.